Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy and I help people with their breakups. And this is the final part of a series of videos I just put together on the no contact rule, little bits and pieces, smaller videos, because a lot of mine are long form, especially with the stories that we unpack. Um, and just because I've been getting so many uh, stories involving, is it gonna work? How long is it gonna take? Hopefully these will help people. And they're in smaller little bits. I broke them down. And today I wanna talk about uh, the no contact rule and how to get through it. Number one, write your story out first and foremost and get it to me at writemac.com or get it to a friend or family member or just read it to yourself. But write it all out and really, really take some inventory or have someone like myself unpack it for you. Okay, number one, take it day by day. If you're having a really bad day, it's a day, okay? Make sure you are exercising. Oh, well, I don't like to exercise. I mean, I've, I've talked to this one woman, and she's really going through it. She's got a case of depression. I said, well, do you have a dog that you're close to? Yeah, okay, okay, you don't like to exercise that much. Like, why don't you just start out by walking your dog around the block? Well, my dog doesn't like to walk. Do um, I don't know, I haven't met many dogs that don't like to get out of the house and go for a walk, I'm sorry to tell you. Okay, my, my next question was, oh, do you, would you, if you had a bicycle, would you go out and ride the bike? Yeah, yeah, I would ride a bike. Okay, so if you, if you, are you able to, well, you know what, I couldn't really get a bicycle. Listen, you can go to a garage sale and get a bicycle. It doesn't matter how it looks. You're just thinking too much. The focus should be pick something, do it every day as a routine. And let me add, if you start going for a walk or going for a jog or going for a run, I just always tell people because I think this is the easiest thing to do. You don't need to join a gym. You don't need to be around a bunch of other people. It's private. It's with your own thoughts. And throw some music on. What music you like to listen to, I don't know. Even if you're listening to heartbreak songs or whatever, I think that helps to make sure you your walk or your run longer. And this is something that worked for me. I took up running. I never liked it before. I always liked playing team sports and it really helped me get through it. And then when you're going and doing these walks or runs, go outside. I'm sorry if you live in a really cold environment, but do your best to be outside, be around nature, be around the sun. That's right. Vitamin D or some people say vitamin D is important to your health and your happiness. So if you can get out in the sun, again, if you're in a cold, snowy climate, I'm sorry, but still get outside. And if it's a sunny day, get your butt out there. And once you get out there for the moment, you're going to have moments that you feel better. Go to pleasant places. Okay. If you like going and getting a coffee, spend a couple hours there, put your music in, go by yourself. Be okay with being by yourself while you're in this no contact. Go to parks, beaches, and go alone. Take some inventory of yourself. Relax yourself. Take some deep breaths. Right now, you have to be used to the fact that you don't always have your partner with you. Go for a hike in the mountains. Get used to the fact that you're alone and be okay with it. Right? Like I said, music helps this because it kind of puts you in a zone. And you don't always have to listen to music with words. There's a lot of really good beats or, or meditation music that's on um, YouTube that's free that can put you in a nice zone. When I'm telling you this right now, if you have any excuses, let me revert that to no excuses about the exercise rule, okay? Because this is going to really help you get through it, really, really help you get through the no contact. <clears throat> Consider hypnotherapy. What's hypnotherapy? You get hypnotized. Yeah, I mean, I've done it a couple times. And what they do is a lot of times they ask you to tell them what's wrong. And then they give you a mantra or something to follow to listen to in your head. And they might make a recording of that. And what they're doing is they're reprogramming your brain. A lot of people use this when they want to quit cigarettes. Your ex is a habit that you had. And I just find hypnotherapy, when I did it, uh, it worked right away. It helped right away. And it... Um, Especially if you're ruminating. I don't know if everyone knows what rumination is, but it, rumination means like you're going over the same thing over and over and over again. You can't get away from that thought. Hypnotherapy will help out a lot with this. And I'll talk about this more in other videos. If you have trouble, use YouTube's guided meditations. So a lot of times if you don't want to do hypnotherapy, but I'm, you know, meditation is an exercise in the mind to relax you. And, oh, I can't meditate. I can't make my mind go blank. I've been there. 
meditation, you don't have to be a Buddhist monk and achieve this high level of um, emptiness and compassion under a tree. No, you can, you can get to a certain level where you took 10 minutes out of your day and just concentrated on your breath and you can lay down doing it. You don't have to sit Indian style. And I found that YouTube has quite a few videos, also uh, hypnotic videos, relaxing you and go through those until you find someone. There's a guy named Michael Seeley that has a lot of good videos, but the guided meditations are good. Um, Jason Stevenson, I'll put a link maybe in the notes below, is really good. I've, I've even sh sent people these videos and emails. I have no affiliation with them. I don't get anything from this. I just know they work and they're free. Next one seems simple, but a lot of people aren't doing it. Eat healthy and drink water. Your body is fighting the worst human sickness, stress. It needs healthy fuel. A lot of people don't drink the water that they need to drink. Also, put some lemon in your water. That helps you digest your food, lemon or lime. And just make an effort to eat healthy. Put healthy food above tasty, greasy, bad food. And just see the difference in how you feel. If you go out to lunch and you have a giant cheeseburger and french fries and a big Coke, see how you feel after that. Then the next day, go somewhere, have a salad or, I don't know, even pasta, something lighter. Uh, on your stomach. Some people are saying, well, pasta is not good for you. Depends on what you have. And I'm not going to go too much into the diet thing right now but because there's loads of information on the internet, but start something new. And I'm not just telling you to do this for your shape or your body or your stomach, which a lot of people care about. I'm telling you to do for your energy. If you don't eat healthy now, research it or find a reason why you should. I just said that. Keep a journal. Just when you're when you're going to bed or in the morning, keep a regular journal of what's going on in your mind. And if you just can't stop ruminating, going over the same things, get it out on paper. One topic, write down three people you know who faced bad breakups and go through them. It's possible. Okay, I have a story to tell. Some people like my stories. My grandmother, who's passed away, I think she passed away about 84, 85 years old. I know when I was going through my breakup, I'm going, fuck, this is tough, man. I've never felt this before. And then I thought to myself, my grandmother was married for approximately 20 years to my grandfather, who I never knew died uh, before I was born. And he was physically abusive. He was an alcoholic and he cheated. And she stuck with him. And he left her. And my, my mother said it was really painful. It was really bad. And she begged for him to come back. She got through it. She met a new husband, who, whom I never knew. This particular man uh, died before I was born. But uh, they had a great life together. They, I think they owned a campground. And they just really got along. And he died of a heart attack, I think in his late 40s or early 50s. She, got, she you know, over the next year, met a new gentleman, got married. This guy died about 10 years later of an asthma attack in front of her. About within six months, she met another guy, or man. This guy was in his 70s. She got married again. They were together for 10 years. He died before her. Can you imagine that? I mean, the perseverance. And if you met my grandma, she was always like a really positive person. She never brought up this, these losses, and she got through them. And I think that probably the first one set the table for dealing with it and realizing that you can get through it. And I know my first really bad breakup, and a lot of the stories that people are sending me that are having the most trouble is your first breakup. But if you, if you treat this first one right, if you go through another one or another travesty, you know, possibly with having someone pass away, you're able to deal with it much better. But if you look at you know, three other people that have been through it before or worse, you just realize it's a human story that's going on. It's a human theme, a human narrative, and it's not just you. And if you stick with it, you'll get through it. Choose one, one or two people to confide in you when you're feeling down. you got one or two friends that are really compassionate and have been through a similar thing. Do not talk to everyone. Do not ask everyone for advice. If you, come, if you came to me, I could be one or two of those, one of those people, not, not two of them. But the thing is about my channel is you can go through my YouTube videos and judge me through that and do your own research and then figure out, well, I like this guy's style and his advice and how he unpacks a story. And I'll go to writemac.com and I'll send him my story. And from there, we can, we can work on it. 
<clears throat> I've mentioned this already. Write your story. Be clear on what happened and get it to me or someone whose opinion you trust. Embrace change. In your relationship, you probably had routines. This is so huge. Embrace change. In your relationship, you had routines and habits that are driving your mind crazy right now. We always used to chat online at 9 p.m. Now what? I want to talk to her. So you get home, you're broken up. It's 9 p.m. You go, this is when I usually talk to her. What do I do now? What do I do now? And the mind goes into habits as a safety mechanism. So the mind starts to trip out a little bit, just like when you had a cigarette after work. You are addicted to that cigarette because it, it capped off your evening you know, after work and it made you feel good. Find it a way to instantly do something to replace that time slot. So, if, for example, if you talked every night at 9 p.m., go to the gym at 9 p.m. So you're not sitting there by the phone wanting to call them. If you usually go to the gym at 9 a.m., change to that time. Don't make an excuse. Change gyms. Okay? Change restaurants. Don't go to the same places you always went together. You're in a change theme. If you had, a, if you had um, a favorite getaway to go to, you went to the beach every Saturday, don't go to that beach anymore. Find another beach to go to on your own that you're, that you're exploring by yourself. <clears throat> go with a friend or go alone. Be comfortable with yourself. This is a big one. Find a purpose or a goal that wasn't possible while being with your ex. It could be something big like moving to a city with a tropical beach and studying a new language. Think big. Uh, the four-hour work week is good for this, not because you want to work four hours a week, but just thinking in a mode of what's possible and having goals. Then start researching that. Allow yourself to believe it's possible. If you don't have the money, how long till you could save the money? So if you get in, you know, you need a purpose to look forward to. So now that you broke up with your ex, you go, you know what? I'm a surfer. I've always wanted to live in Hawaii. I want to live in a tropical climate. We could have never moved if we were still together. I'm going to make that my goal this next year. I need to save up about a year's salary. When I get to 20 grand, I'm moving. And if I just live there for one year, that's enough. I'm getting out of this environment. And that's a huge one to help you out. Don't be afraid to change your entire environment. If you're able to move to another city or another country, you are not running away from things. You are embracing change. And once you get in that other environment, you don't have all the triggers around you um, that you once did that remind you of your ex so much. It's still going to hurt, but it's really going to help. And I'll talk about this more in another video because it's one of the things I did. I just moved. And the minute I moved, pff, my recovery went like this. Choose an area or a place with nature you've always wanted to live in. What's holding you back now is the question to ask. And I'm going to have 10 questions to ponder as a theme for your breakup. I already have another 10 questions to ponder that I'm going to release and send out to some people. The first 10 questions I gave out went over really big. And these questions are really starting points to get through things and work on yourself. So my question right now is, Make a choice of what you really want to do or a new environment you want to live in and figure out what's holding you back and how to get over that. So visit rightmac.com and tell me your breakup story so I can help you out and provide you with possibly a video where we unpack your story, which you can look at in some of my other videos. And like I said, judge my videos for yourself. Make some comments. Tell me, tell me if you like them. Tell me if you don't like them. I'm here to help. Have a good day.